Miami On Demand from Mid-American Conference Media Day, Ford Field in Detroit. Steve Baker here, joined by the coordinator of football officials for the Collegiate Officiating Consortium, Bill Corello. And, Bill, always a pleasure to see you up here in Detroit. We get to have this discussion every year. And uh, we'll begin where uh, Commissioner Steinbrecher was talking about a couple of changes in the Mid-American Conference officiating crews. Conference is going to eight officials this year for football games. What's that mean on the football field and what fans see? Yeah, I don't know if the fans will really notice a big difference. You know, I mean, um, I told the coaches yesterday, I said, here are the results of the Big Ten uh, experiment last year where I got permission to go to eight officials. And we, were, we led the country as far as number of games. We did it in every single Big Ten assignment. And so 103 games. And um, I don't think the fans would technically notice it, but the facts are last year we produced 1.3 additional flags per game that we didn't have the, the prior years, okay? So um, it's conceivable that we'll see maybe one or two more flags, and that's what I told the coaches. And then I took the video of all the plays that the center judge, which is the new position, types of calls that, and the focus. And So I gave them a training tape on what they're supposed to be doing and when and, and where they're looking, et cetera. Here are the fouls that they, that, that they threw, and they were correct. Um, so they could kind of coach their players, the expectation is that, okay, there's some backside coverage. There's some additional coverage on the quarterback. Someone's helping with chop blocks with the umpire, et cetera. You know, so uh, I thought that was a really good session that we had with them. And then, not that they need to know all the details, but we gave them a 30-minute training tape on the new position so they know not only does this one official helping with the head referee or the umpire because he's in the offensive backfield, it frees up my line of scrimmage officials to go downfield because we're passing more than we ran 10 years ago. You know, we didn't put, we went from six to seven in 1983 because we're supposedly really pass happy. Well, we've doubled those numbers. I mean, the game is all passy, you know. And, and, and the key, you know, is protecting the quarterback because he's the key player out there um, in many cases uh, for their offense. So, um, but the plays are happening seven, eight, ten yards downfield. So that takes my line of scrimmage officials. They don't have to stay at the line because the center judge is there and he's watching the tackle and they can float downfield. So it's, it's given us much, much better coverage. And when the coaches say, what can you do to make officiating better, I said, I, I have, I, you know, there's some training, invest in technology, et cetera. But I said, I need an eighth official. It's not that we're not fit, can't cover the field, but it's not 22 players between the hash marks with single wing and full house backfield running up the middle. We can do that with four or five officials. You know, when we get to, uh, the passing game and the kicking game and wide open, and now they're spreading us from sideline to sideline. It's not between the hashes, between the numbers. It's all the way to the side. And because of that, too many blind spots, too many player safety is so critical, we're missing things because we just couldn't, didn't see it, didn't see it. So I said, you know, give me an eighth guy. It costs a lot of money. You know, we're going to, we're going to, you know, add that type of expense to it. But I think it's worth it for player safety, better coverage, and we can control the pace of the game a little bit better with an extra person in there. Uh, because teams, some teams, especially in the MAC, are high octane offenses, and they are going 190, 200 plays a game total when they're involved in, and they're doing half of those plays. So when they're running that many offensive plays uh, in a game, um, not that we have to be in shape, but we have to control that pace so we're in position to officiate properly. Your set of eyes is always helpful. One uh, new thing that fans will see in Mid-American Conference football this year are female referees, and, and, and Commissioner Steinbrecher uh, made the point not because just they're female, but they are, they are qualified for this position, and uh, I think that's a great addition to our officiating crew. Yeah, we're really pleased what we've done, and it isn't just find somebody and put them on the field, and this is not a publicity stunt. This is not a, a, a gimmick or draw attention to the Mid-American Conference at all. These people have earned the right to be there, an opportunity to, you know, get booed by everybody like everybody else, right? Uh, but I, and people say, well, is it this, is that? I said, no, you know what it is? It's, it's called progress. Um, and, and I, for three or four years, have worked with these officials and put them in other leagues or at lower levels um, until they prove that they can work this. And some of them come from other major conferences. One of them does, you know, from Conference USA, for instance, a couple years experience and, and so on. So they, uh, you know, they'll get booed like everybody else, but, uh, and they'll make their mistakes, but uh, I'm really excited about it. And I really would, I do call it, you know, people when they ask me, I says, this is progress. Let's not get in the way.
Exactly. And, and again, we talk about qualifications to do this job. Obviously, every official goes through so much. Talk to me about that, what it takes at this level at Division I college football to become that official. Well, you've got to be, number one, you've got to be prepared and you have to work your way up. First of all, we look for, are you capable of work at this level? Not that you have the potential, someday you'll be a good official. And I put, a, I put them in a, in a game, you know, Miami and uh, Toledo, and it's a big game and uh, over their head. So we work their, we, we, we wait till they're ready. We think they're ready. So capability is really important. And then once they get there, they have to keep getting better. The teams, the bar keeps slowly moving upward. And we, and I don't want to just stay chasing that bar or just staying with it. I want to be over the bar. I want to be leading. So, you know, it's it's the technology, it's the training off season, it's the video testing. Um, it, our officials spend more time, more grass time in the off season, on the field, working practices, you know, in, in, in March, uh, going to clinic. They go to four or five clinics on the average per person, per year. Um, so they put numerous days in in the off season besides uh, the time actually on the field studying we do bi-weekly quizzes video quizzes uh, written quiz quizzes in the off season so when we get to the season it's not like well by the fifth game we're going to be ready we're we're in shape now no, we're in shape we're i mean we're peaking right now and we want to hold that all the way through the season we want to start the season uh, being prepared so all the work you know when you talk to coaches championships are one one in the off season during the summer and before the games it's the same with officials in my opinion, all the work is just about done. Yeah. Now it's a little tune-up, yeah. you know, in August. And come September, they should be ready to carry it all the way through to January. Talk about the conditioning and the physical conditioning. There's the mental aspect, too, knowing all the rules. And, and every year those, there are those changes and new things to become familiar with, uh, not only for the officials but for the fans. So uh, what are those changes this year that fans will be talking about? Yeah, like I said, we added a couple things on replay or clarified what could – or should be uh, reviewable. Onside kicks are uh, the touching of onside kicks and the blocking of, of players that illegally. It's always the rule, but it wasn't a reviewable play. So we're putting that in because uh, of some player safety issues. And then touching of a kick, excuse me, touching of a of the ball on a pass or a kick uh, has always been in the book. It's reviewable, but we never. Um, the example we used, and we had a couple plays where we had roughing the kicker, and the referee announced uh, the ball was tipped. There's no foul for roughing the kicker, and that's the rule, and that was correct. But if we were wrong, you know, sometimes it's hard to see. Did he really just tip barely tip it? Um, and that's all it has to be, just slightly touched, right. and there's no foul for roughing or run, running the kicker. Uh, now, if we make that announcement, replay has the right to go in there, and if we're incorrect, replay has the right to call down it and tell us the ball was not touched, it is a foul, and we threw a late flag. And in the past, we never did that. So you could see a couple more pass interferences because we were wrong on the actual tipping. Because you see it coming out wobbly, he shanks the kick, whatever it might be, and you think, well, he had to tip it. And then you find out he missed it. He just rushed it, and it was a poor kick. So that helps us. You know, replay is interesting. It's probably the, one of the best um, rule changes we've ever had in my, in my tenure with football um, because it's there to get plays right. You know, it, it's there to correct the, the egregious errors, and, and we make errors. And we continue to make errors, but the egregious ones are going to be reviewed, you know, and uh, if it's a big ticket item, and I call big ticket items uh, scoring plays, changes of possession, and targeting, if we can get those right, you know, we're still going to have a handful of plays that aren't perfect, but we're getting pretty close to a, a really clean, fair, balanced game. With you. Well, and you know, in addition to the rule changes, there's always things that uh, the committees go through and say, okay, this this maybe needs to be looked at. A point of emphasis is what has been called in the past. Tell us about some of those this year. Yeah, we've we've tried to clean up some of the unsportsmanlike acts out there, and I think the MAC does a tremendous job. The coaches do a, a great job in this area uh, of, of of teaching and training their players what they can and can't do. But if we have a pile up, a fumble, you know, and players used to be able to come in and pull off opponents off the pile to help find their person that has the ball on their team. Um, if you do that, and we don't need the help of unpiling, because it leads to pushing and shoving. Now we're more focused on that than the, the focus is on the ball and so on. So you have, it takes all officials that when you have 10, 12 players down there. Uh, so that will be a penalty now. It never was a penalty unless uh, it, it, it rolls to that level. But just pulling an opponent off the pile will be a 15-yard penalty under unsportsmanlike conduct areas. Um, also, the sideline, it falls under the unsportsmanlike category, but we are going to 
um, administer a sideline warning. Uh, if, if players, coaches, um, attendants are in the white area during the live ball, which is key, during the live ball, if they're in the white, they get a warning. Next time it's a five-yard penalty, next time a five-yard penalty, and if we ever get to a, the third time, the fourth time after the warrant, third time after the warning, um, it would be a 15-yard penalty. So uh, we're trying to clean up the sideline for safety on the sideline, so we can officiate, not worried about what's behind me. Who would I run into? More so, they want to. I want to keep the eyes of the officials on the field. Now that doesn't um, conflict with another rule, though. If I'm the opening kickoff and I'm running down the sideline, and I run into a coach or a player in the white, and it affects me or knocks me over automatic 15-yard penalty. So if you, when you make contact with the official in the white, you will get a 15-yard penalty, no warning. But the, the warning just means that you're encroaching in our space. You haven't affected me, but you're in our space. And we're trying to prevent that official from running in, injuring the coach or the official. Bill, it's always a pleasure to talk with you, and uh, you do a great job with the officials in this conference, and uh, appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thanks a lot, Steve. I really appreciate the time. Bill Corallo joining us, the uh, consortium, uh, let me get it right here, the Collegiate Officiating Consortium, and he is the coordinator of football officials joining us on Miami On Demand.